Hello everyone, it's Terry here. Thank you so much for joining me on the Pick a Fence Studios YouTube channel. Today we have something very special to share with you guys. It is our new paper pouncers. They're not like our life-changing blender brushes. These applicators actually have a sponge tip. Okay, so in the shop we have two separate sets. So we have the color sets and we also have the neutral set. So the paper pouncers were custom made for Picket Fence Studios. It contained a high quality specialty sponge. This bouncy sponge allows you to pounce ink onto delicate die cuts without damaging the die cuts. As you can see here, the texture is just so soft. It's like a little marshmallow and I just love how cute this look. So each paper pouncer comes with its own color coordinated storage case. The bottom of the case also works as the perfect stand to keep your paper pouncer in while on your work surface. So what I really love about using the paper pouncer is that the grip is very easy to use. So if you have trouble with your hands when you're ink blending, this would be a great option because it's very easy on your hands and my young crafters at home, they love using this. Okay, so let's jump on in and start using these paper pouncers. Okay, so for the first example, I wanted to use the neutral set. So I'm going in with this new stencil from the latest release. This one is called Pathway Stencil. And I'm placing that on my magnetic station. I went ahead and placed a white colored cardstock underneath my stencil. You can use any colored cardstock that you have, but I figured white would look really good with the ink colors that I'm choosing today. So I went ahead and pulled out the coordinating color paper pouncers that I will be using with my ink choices. Here you can see I'm using yellow, orange, and brown. And don't mind me, I just love squeezing the little pouncers. So starting with the yellow colored ink, I went in and started pouncing that on top of the stencil. And this is really nice when you're using the pouncer because it doesn't shift around your stencil. Unlike a blending brush, you're using the blending brush from side to side in a circular motion. And with the paper pouncer, you're just pouncing the ink on top of whatever you're inking. In this case, it's a stencil and you're just pouncing the color on top of that. So it doesn't really move your stencil around, which I really love. Now going in with the orange color paper pouncer and I'm dipping that into my ink and you really don't need a lot of ink when you're pouncing this onto your ink pad. So then again, I went in and started pouncing that on top of the stencil. And here you can see that it's really nice. You get a lot of coverage using the paper pouncers. Now going in with the brown paper pouncer, I added brown color on the top portion of the stencil. You can definitely go heavy handed on this, but I like a mixture of both. So to give it a little more interest, I went in with a heavier hand on certain areas and lighter on the rest. Okay, and once I was finished with that, I went ahead and put it back in the storage container. And the best part is to remove the stencil and see the work that you just created. And I'm telling you guys, these pouncers are so easy to use. It's so easy on your hands and your joints. All you have to do is just pounce it onto the stencil and the paper or the cardstock and you're good to go. Look how great this looks, so easy to do. Okay, so I had really fun using the neutral set, so now I wanted to use the color set. So on another white cardstock, I'm going in with a second stencil. This stencil is also from the March 2023 release. This one is called Flower Burst Stencil. Okay, so this time around, I wanted to go in with rainbow colors. So I'm going in with pink, yellow, orange, green, blue, and purple. And I wanted to mention again that since you're pouncing on top of the stencil, it's less likely that your stencil will shift around. Oftentimes when I'm using my blender brush and a delicate stencil, my stencil would shift during the blending process. So this is a great option to have for delicate stencils. And you're probably wondering, how do you take care of these paper pouncers? So it's actually not too complicated at all. I would suggest lightly wiping them off slightly with a damp paper towel or baby wipe, or even on a scrap piece of paper. What I wouldn't recommend is adding water to the paper pouncers 
because when you add water to the paper pouncers, the shape and texture of the sponge can change. And that's going to alter the effects of the pouncers. Okay, so continuing on with the card panel, I am going in with some paper glaze. This one is probably one of my favorites because it's a neutral color and it goes with about everything. This one is Arctic Fox and this recent release just came out with the big jar. So this is an eight ounce jar and I love it because I use it pretty much on everything. So here you can see that I am placing it on only certain areas of the stencil. I know this is a little time consuming, but I thought that it was worth it in the end. And also FYI, do not use your paper pouncers with glaze products. It would definitely ruin the sponge tip. Okay, so here's a close-up look at it after it dried out. And you can see that there's just a little pop of shimmer and sparkle. And I love that. Okay, so before we assemble everything together, I went ahead and trimmed this piece down. I trimmed it to four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I also matted that on top of a black cardstock that was slightly larger. And off screen, I went ahead and die cut this big, beautiful dragonfly die out of vellum and black cardstock. And for the sentiment, I went in with one of the sentiments from the Animal Crackers Caring Friend stamp set. I stamped that directly onto our card panel with our black hybrid ink. That's really a great way to stretch out your supplies when you kind of dig through all of your stash and pull out sentiments from different sets. Okay, so now I went ahead and adhered everything down to a top folding white card base. And there you have it. That pretty much completes the card and I hope you enjoy this tutorial and please don't forget to thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.